Welcome to a lesson on vertex coloring. Perhaps the most famous graph theory problem is how to color maps. Given any map of countries, states, counties, etc., how many colors are needed to color each region on the map so that neighboring regions are colored differently? Actual map makers usually use around seven colors. For one thing, they require watery regions to be a specific color, and with a lot of colors, it is easier to find a permissible coloring. We want to know whether there is a smaller palette of colors that will work for any map. How is this related to graph theory? Well, if we place a vertex in the center of each region, say in the capital of each state, and then connect two vertices if their states share a border, we get a graph. Coloring regions on the map corresponds to coloring the vertices on the graph. Since neighboring regions cannot be colored the same, our graph cannot have vertices colored the same when those vertices are adjacent. Looking at the graph below, if we place a vertex in each state or each region, and then connect the vertices if the regions share a border. We have the following graph. And again, coloring the regions on the map corresponds to coloring the vertices on the graph. Since neighboring regions cannot be colored the same, our graph cannot have vertices colored the same when those vertices are adjacent. In general, given any graph G, a coloring of the vertices is called a vertex coloring. If the vertex coloring has the property that adjacent vertices are colored differently, then the coloring is called proper. Every graph has a proper vertex coloring. For example, you can color every vertex with a different color, but often you can do better. The smallest number of colors needed to get a proper vertex coloring is called the chromatic number of the graph written chi of g. If chi of g equals k, we say the graph is k-chromatic. Looking at the graph below on the left, this would be a vertex coloring this is not a proper vertex coloring, though, because adjacent vertices are not colored differently. This would be a vertex coloring that is also a proper vertex coloring because adjacent vertices are colored differently. Notice how we used three colors here. We can also get a proper vertex coloring using just two colors. If we change the purple vertex on the right to blue, adjacent vertices are colored differently because two colors is the smallest number of colors needed to get a proper vertex coloring, the chromatic number of the graph is two. Now looking at the graph on the right, because the graph is a triangle where each vertex is adjacent to the other two vertices in the graph, the smallest number of colors needed for a proper vertex coloring for this graph is three different colors. The chromatic number of the graph is three. So again, a proper vertex coloring or proper coloring of a graph G is the assignment of colors to the vertices such that all adjacent vertices have different colors. And now let's look at some examples. We're asked to find the chromatic number of the graphs below. First, we have the complete graph K6. Notice every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. Well, if every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex and there are six vertices, we cannot get a proper coloring unless we color each vertex a different color. A proper coloring will take six colors. Here is a proper coloring of the given graph with the smallest number of colors possible. So again, the only way to properly color the graph is to give every vertex a different color since every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. Thus, the chromatic number is six. Now, we do want to mention sometimes when we talk about vertex coloring, we use numbers instead of colors, where each number represents a different color. So let's see if we can find a proper coloring with the smallest number of colorings for the middle graph. Let's label the top vertex one. Notice this vertex is adjacent to two other vertices, which must be labeled a different number. We'll label them two and three. And if I go down to the vertex in the middle of the bottom row, we can label this vertex one because it's adjacent to the vertices labeled two and three, as well as two other vertices not labeled yet. And now looking at the vertex on the left, it's adjacent to the vertices labeled one and two. We can label this three. For the vertex on the right, it's adjacent to the vertices labeled one and three. We can label this vertex two. Three is the smallest number of colors that we can use to get a proper coloring. The chromatic number is three. There's no way to color it with just two colors, since there are three vertices mutually adjacent. Again, the chromatic number is three. And for the last graph, 
we have the complete bipartite graph k sub 2 comma 3. Let's assume the top row of vertices is in set A and the bottom row of vertices is in set B. The smallest number of colors needed to get a proper coloring for any bipartite graph is two. We can color all the vertices in one set one color and all the vertices in the second set a different color. This is a proper coloring of the graph because all adjacent vertices have different colors. In fact, for all bipartite graphs, the chromatic number is two. We can color the vertices on the top row one color and the vertices on the bottom row a second color. Before we go, let's look at some additional facts about vertex coloring. If the graph G has n vertices, then chi of G, the chromatic number, which is the smallest number of colors needed to get a proper coloring of the graph, is less than or equal to n. Chi of G equals one, if and only if G has no edges. Chi of C sub 2n, meaning the cyclon and even number of vertices is equal to two, and chi of C sub 2n plus one, which is a cycle on an odd number of vertices, is equal to three. And let's take a look at why this is. On the right, we have the graph of C4. Because we have an even number of vertices, the chromatic number is two, indicating we can have a proper coloring of the graph using just two colors. So because we have an even number of vertices, we can start with one color, the next vertex a second color, and then just alternate colors around the cycle. And notice how we do have a proper coloring of the graph using two colors because adjacent vertices are colored differently. Because adjacent vertices have different colors. But if we try the same technique when we have a cycle on an odd number of vertices, again, we'll start by alternating the colors. When we get to the last vertex, notice how it's adjacent to one vertex colored blue and another vertex colored green. We have to use a different color, which introduces a third color to get a proper coloring of the graph, which is why chi of C sub 2n plus one equals three and chi of C sub 2n is equal to two. Next, chi of K sub n equals n. K sub n is the complete graph where each vertex is adjacent to every other vertex in the graph. On the right, we have the graph of K5. The smallest number of colors we can use to get a proper coloring of the graph is five. Again, this is because every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. Next, if G is a bipartite graph, then chi of G is always equal to two. If H is a subgraph of G, then chi of H is less than or equal to chi of G. And that should make sense. For example, if chi of G is equal to, let's say five, then the chromatic number of a subgraph of G would have to be less than or equal to five. And then finally, a proper vertex coloring or proper coloring of a graph G partitions the vertex set V into K sets, V sub one through V sub K, where each V sub I is independent set, meaning no two vertices in the set are adjacent. I hope you found this helpful.